Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania is an enigma in the theme park world, owned and operated by a chocolate company. That's why it was such a surprise to us that this park is actually an incredibly well-rounded experience for the young and the young at heart. Featuring 14 roller coasters, a fully-fledged water park and zoo, and surprisingly less chocolate than you'd think. While this park may seem out of the way, being a good couple of hours from Philadelphia, it's actually America's busiest theme park outside of California or Florida. So is this theme park as sweet as candy or as bitter as dark chocolate? I'm Luke and this is Review Time's review of Hershey Park. Family Rides, 7 out of 10. If you can think of a family or children's ride featured at your local theme park, Hershey Park probably has it too. The park contains a good selection of family flat rides, including some absolute classics of fairgrounds such as a whip, a tilt-a-whirl and more. But they are scattered around the park, so prepare yourself for some walking if you want to have some classic family fun. Some of the best attractions to ride together as a family are the multiple rides that provide a nice, leisurely way to get a view of the park, including the Ferris wheel, Dry Gulch Railroad, and our personal favorite, the world-famous Kissing Tower. Just make sure you moisten your lips and pucker up before riding. Another great way to see the park is via the monorail that takes you all throughout it, and then out to the original Hershey factory. Just be aware though that this is not a transport ride. So while it's a great way to learn about the history of Hershey, take a load off your feet and get an aerial view of the park, it probably isn't worth the crazy long waits it can sometimes get. The park's only dark ride is Cup Fusion, an interactive ride where you must protect the Reese's factory that has been overrun by imposter candies. This ride was a pleasant surprise, mixing a good variety of screen-based and practical targets. The attraction is insanely popular though, and can get some massive weights, which shows one of the downfalls of the park when it comes to family rides. The fact that it only contains this one family-friendly dark ride that everyone can enjoy together. Expanding on these types of offerings will hopefully be a focus for the park moving forward. Thrill Rides, nine out of 10. While you may think a chocolate-based theme park would be mostly family-friendly, arguably the standout attractions are those aimed at thrill-seekers. The park contains 14 roller coasters, which combined make for a great lineup, with every coaster offering something unique and different. Our standout thrill attraction in the park has to be Sky Rush. I didn't know much about this attraction before riding it, but boy was it a heart-pounding surprise. The day before, we rode Intimidator 305 and almost blacked out. Sky Rush, in comparison, is pretty much just a fun version of that ride. The airtime you receive on this coaster is insane. And while the restraints may give you a little bit of a thigh crush, the pain is definitely worth the gain, as Sky Rush is now one of my favorite coasters in the world. The newest ride offering is the B&M Hypercoaster Candymonium, which gives you all the buttery smooth floater airtime you would expect from one of these rides. Being at the front of the park and the newest attraction, it gets some crazy wait times first thing in the morning. So we suggest coming back later to give this one a ride. Some of our other do not miss coasters include Storm Runner, an intimate accelerator launch coaster that actually feels like a full ride and not just a launch like most of them, as well as Fahrenheit, which starts out with a vertical lift hill before plunging you into a jumble of track and through six different inversions. We also got to experience Wildcat, which was a bit of a brain rattler, but since our visit has recently been closed and is rumored to be getting RMC'd, thank gosh. A selection of other thrilling coasters round out the lineup, including the wooden dueling lightning racer, the coolest looking Vekoma boomerang out there, Jolly Rancher Remix, the B&M Invert, the Great Bear, and the Super Duper Looper, which was the only closed ride on our visit to the park. Don't worry if you aren't a coaster enthusiast though, 
as there are plenty of thrilling flat rides throughout the park as well, including the super unique Hershey Triple Tower, which allows you to pick your own level of thrill. Experiences, nine out of 10. We say it a lot here at review time, it's almost become a cliche, but we don't say it lightly and I'm about to say it again. Thanks to its experiences, Hershey Park truly has something for everyone. We don't just mean rides either. If someone in your group doesn't want to do any attractions, there's still something for them to do. This is thanks to the zoo and water park at Hershey Park, which are both included in regular park admission. The fittingly named Zoo America contains over 200 animals that are native to the North American continent, which with us being international visitors, meant there were animals on display I'd never seen before. The zoo takes about an hour to walk around and is a good way to break up your day. The boardwalk, the attached water park, similarly is another way to segment your day at Hershey Park, featuring plenty of pools, water slides and splashdowns to cool you off on a hot summer's day. Also, we haven't included it in our score, but if you're looking for something to do around Hershey and don't have time for the full theme park, make sure you drop into Hershey's Chocolate World next door. Containing multiple attractions, including a free chocolate factory dark ride, complete with complimentary Hershey's chocolate bar at the end. Entertainment, three out of 10. The only show offered at the park on our visit was the Our Friends from the Sea, Sea Lion Show, which we didn't get to see as the park is so large and has so much to do. It did appear to be popular though, with the theater packed to capacity when we walked past at showtime. It's good to see that some of the animals featured in the show are rescued and it gives them a second chance at life. Beyond that, there isn't much in terms of entertainment. The park would benefit from some theater style shows to get people off their feet. There was a reasonable amount of theaters throughout the park, but they weren't being utilized during our visit, which was right in the middle of summer break. So if they aren't being utilized then, it's tough to imagine a time they would have been. There is several character meet and greets throughout the park where you can meet all the Hershey characters. Just be warned though that some of them may stare directly into your soul. But you know one thing that would be sweeter than a Hershey's chocolate? Giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to further support what we do, be sure to check out our Patreon. Operations, seven out of 10. Our day got off to a rather rough start when it comes to operations. We knew that Laugh Track could get some rather lengthy waits and decided to rush to it first as it was at the back of the park and would hopefully have a short wait. Upon arrival, we thought that we were correct to do this as the posted wait time was only 25 minutes. However, we ended up waiting almost 70 minutes to get on the attraction and this was our first ride of the day making us worried for the rest of our trip. Thankfully, this ended up being the longest wait, not just of the day, but of our entire US trip. Unfortunately, this wait time unreliability with the Hershey Park app wasn't just felt on Laugh Track, with all of them essentially being untrustable, with every queue either being way longer or way shorter than what was advertised. So we eventually ended up trusting our eyes when looking at the queue lengths more than the posted wait times. Thankfully, outside of this wait time issue, the park's operations themselves were commendable. Most rides were running multiple trains, even if the queues didn't call for them, which was great to see. Though the more parks we visit around the world, the more we seem to learn that running single train operations on major coasters for 80% of the year seems to be an Australian thing rather than the international norm. The park staff members were hustling to get the trains out quickly, leading to queues that may have been lengthy, but moved consistently, meaning we were able to do all of the park's major attractions in a single day. Theming, six out of 10. The park is full of lush greenery and well-presented attractions, but doesn't feature heavily themed rides or areas. Heading into the park after hearing its name and the company it's owned and operated by, 
You'd think there'd be chocolate theming everywhere you looked, but this wasn't the case. With most attractions instead featuring generic themes that would fit well at any amusement park. The attractions that embraced the park's themes such as Cup Fusion and the Kissing Tower were the standouts thematically, but every attraction feels at least well presented, with the old charm of classic amusement park attractions still holding up. The new entrance area of Chocolate Town is nicely finished, but there's a bit of a void between the new and old entrance areas. Hopefully over time that will be filled with more attractions and things to do, making the transition a little smoother. Outside of Chocolate Town and the boardwalk themed water park called the Boardwalk, the park doesn't really feature any distinct themed lands, making this feel more like an amusement park with some themed offerings than a fully fledged theme park. Merchandise, seven out of 10. I have Australian taste buds. I don't really care for Hershey chocolate. So for me, I didn't feel the need to buy any of the countless candy branded items. But thankfully, the park also offered many park and ride specific merchandise pieces for both old and new attractions. It was great to see another park with a wide selection of Coaster Dynamics models at the cheapest price we've seen the parks around the US, with a nano coaster or coaster cutout coming in at $30. The park exits through a gift shop that thankfully contains pretty much everything you would ever want. So don't feel the need to carry around items with you for the entire day and instead save your shopping till the end. So you have a good idea of what attractions you might want to remember via a piece of merchandise. Affordability. 9 out of 10. For how much Hershey Park has to do, essentially featuring three attractions in one, tickets are greatly affordable. At full price, a one day ticket is 77 US dollars, but they can pretty much be purchased on special at all times on the website for around $50, which is an insane value when you remember it doesn't include just the theme park, but the water park and zoo as well. Season passes are similarly reasonable, starting at $160 for a summer pass and the top option only being $240, which includes free drinks all season long and two free tickets you can use on your friends and family. Food was also cheap, with some options such as Reader's Frozen Custard being literally half the price for the exact same item compared to the park we visited the day before. The only thing we would maybe hold off on purchasing though is surprisingly the namesake Hershey candy. I would wait to buy a big bag of that at Walmart for a much lower price. Atmosphere, seven out of 10. We visited Hershey Park in the middle of summer, one of the busiest times. And whilst the park was packed, all of the groups we saw seemed to be having a great time with most having a smile on their faces. The only complaints we overheard from guests were unfortunately right at the start of our day, with a long queue for security followed by a long queue for laugh track, leading to some disgruntled comments from people around us. Thankfully, as the day went on, the positive energy radiating from groups walking around the park increased. One thing Hershey Park is lacking in is music around the park, with plenty of areas just having the sounds of rides coasters and screams. It would have been great to hear some music around to put you in the mood and hype you up for the day ahead. Staff in the park were doing their best, but it was hot and the crowds were intense. So a shout out to them for doing as well as they did on a day like ours. Services, seven out of 10. The park offers a variety of paid and free services that can make your day easier. The first is the paid fast track upgrade that lets you skip the queues. But with the huge number of attractions on offer in the park, we don't feel it's necessary to purchase this. We were there in the summer and were able to get everything done that we wanted to, including four rides on Skyrush. One of the other offerings is the HP Go Plus wristband, but we're not sure what it's really for other than linking your skip the line pass and saving your high score on Cup Fusion. Hopefully this idea will be expanded to include more attractions, 
because it would be a cool way to track your stats. It'd be great if at the end of the day you could see how many rides you'd ridden, how far you'd traveled on coasters, and what your top speed was. One thing to know is that the park is huge. We recommend getting your walking legs on and booking it to the back of the park and working backwards towards the front. It's the easiest way to avoid crowds. While the park does seem to have transport rides, a lot of them are more sightseeing based and start and stop at the same location. So your day will include a whole lot of steps. With us walking over 16 kilometers, which is 10 miles, on our day at the park. Final thoughts. Hershey Park honestly surprised me. I didn't know what to expect when visiting. All we knew was that it was owned by a chocolate company and that didn't instill us with too much confidence. Thankfully, the park is great, featuring an insanely well-rounded selection of rides for everyone from toddlers to thrill seekers. While it may be difficult to get to as an international visitor, it's definitely worth a visit if you're ever in the area. Trust me, you need to experience the insanity of Skyrush. It's also great to see all the positive things the Hershey Company does for the community, such as the Milton Hershey School, which provides free education to students who may not receive it otherwise. Review Time's final score for Hershey Park is 71 out of 100. For review time, I'm Luke. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Review Time. If so, be sure to like and subscribe, and also check out our podcast, Review Time's Theme Park Cast, available on your podcasting platform of choice.